What's up everyone, it's Matt Rosick, and this will be the work in progress number three on The Thing, and probably the last one. So I uh, sent photos to my client last night, he's loving it, uh, looks really good. I've got him put together right now because I just epoxied uh, the boots and the belt on, and I just want to put the torso on, so that way the weight's on there and it's in the right position. Um, it's looking really good, I got a little bit of epoxy kind of sneaking out right here, so once it's dry I'll just hit it with some flat and you won't be able to see it. Um, so the best thing... If you get a little, um, when you're epoxying things, um, like in the final stages, the trick is to make sure you have enough epoxy that it holds what you're trying to hold, but not too much that it oozes out everywhere. So it's always a balancing act. And the keys and the boots were a little bit loose, so I put a little bit more epoxy in there than I probably normally would. If it's a real tight fit, you just need a real thin layer. Um, but um, I'm gonna let this epoxy sit for about 10 minutes or so with the torso on there. It's a five minute epoxy, which means you have five minutes of working time. It actually takes 24 hours to cure completely, but in about 10, 15 minutes, it'll be to the point where it's, it's gonna stay where it's gonna stay. And then we're gonna work on doing the stone or his skin, I guess it's the skin, uh, on him. My client sent me some updated references for that. So we're gonna go more towards the brown side and less of the orange side. And I um, actually found a color that's pretty damn close to the reference. It's a Vallejo color. So I'm going to spray that on as a base here in a little bit. And uh, we'll go from there. Got to mask off the, um, the hood from uh, Dr. Doom in his hand. And then um, we'll do that. Uh, we'll spray this base color and see how it looks. Okay, so I primed... Um, I went ahead and primed this guy in Style Res Neutral... Uh, skin tone primer because um, I wanted to since we're going kind of towards a stone look uh, didn't want to use gray well actually no what I did is I mixed up some of that color I showed you um, this parasite brown and I was spraying it on the gray and it wasn't covering very well so I primed it in this color the neutral and then I sprayed some of this on the heads and when it dried it came out really really orange so um, it, it came out way oranger than what it looks like in the bottle. So I have another, so I went back and reprimed them and now I have another idea. So this is um, Badger Style Res Neutral um, Primer. I got a little something here I gotta fix. And so what I think I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna try this with washes. Um, I got a little imperfection here I wanna try to get rid of. Uh, so, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to do washes. Um, I think that might be the way to go because then I'll get down in the recesses and I, it'll stain this color because the color reference I have is kind of a yellow. It's actually, depending on how you look at it, it's from the renders. Uh, the front of him is warmer and the back is more yellow. So let me, so I'm not sure if it's showing up. So if you look at this, this is very close to this, just a little bit darker. But if you look at the front, it's all in the lighting. He's very, almost almost orange. So that's what I was going by. But we specifically said we want to stay away from orange. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, keep, I, I, I primed it, let it dry, and then I sealed it with some flat. I'm going to mix up a wash. Um, and it's going to be kind of a thick wash because I wanted to get in the cracks and I wanted to stain the stone. So I'm going to mix up some raw umber. Let me get a better cup. Give me one second. I'm going to use a plastic cup because uh, those paper cups don't last very long when you're mixing uh, watercolors or acrylics in them. So I'm going to mix up some raw umber. I need to go get some more. This almost, I'm almost out. I'm going to need quite a bit because i got to cover this, this guy. He's, he's big. So we got two missions here. Get darken the cracks and stain the top of them. We do some raw umber. I'm gonna mix in some um, burnt umber. This is a more dark brown. Has a little bit of red in it. And then I'm also gonna put a little of yellow, cadmium yellow, medium hue, just a bit. And then we're gonna see what this looks like. That yellow, actually that yellow might make, turn it orange. So I'm gonna put that out, pull that out for now. 
Again, we're trying to stay away from orange. <laughs> so right now it looks kind of like poop. But that's okay. And I'm going to put a little water in here. I'm just using the back of a paintbrush to mix it up. Yeah, right now it looks like diarrhea. It's really appetizing. But when I do this, I have to make sure I make up, mix up enough to do the whole thing because it's got to be consistent across the whole statue. So I'd rather have too much and waste a little bit than not have enough and have to try to match the color. So these are um, the acrylics I, I like to use are Liquitex or the um, Golden. The Golden, um, these are. Um, uh, there's a specific version because they all have different uh, qualities of acrylics. I think these are medium body or heavy body. So the Liquitex are heavy body acrylics, meaning there's more pigment, they're thicker. And the Golden, I think, are medium body. Anyway, um, it, it just a, there, there is a price difference. Um, some of them can get very expensive. What gets expensive are, are like a titanium white. Especially in an oil paint, titanium white is crazy expensive on some stuff. You can get a little tube of titanium white for like 40 bucks. For just the smallest tube. So my, my, what I'm thinking I'm gonna, this will do is it'll get down the cracks. It'll stain the top a little bit. And then I can go back and do some dry brushing. Where'd my um, knife go? I see another little imperfection on the surface here. I'll take care of. There we go. I swear. This is why I have like 500 X-Acto knives. I put them down and I can't find them. So I go buy more. And then when I clean up my studio, I find them all. <laughs> I actually have like 10 of these. But right now I can only see three. <laughs> because again, I just had that one. Oh, there it is. Over to the side of me. I put it down. I can't find it. I think I may add in a little bit of uh, raw sienna. Or burnt sienna, sorry. A little, more red, a little more red to this. Again, we're playing with thin layers. I need to think about... So far, it's been one of those mornings. Okay, so I'm adding a little raw sienna to this. Burnt sienna, sorry. And this should add a little redness to it. So I'm just, sorry, just mixing this up. It's not most... Not the most exciting thing to watch, but so what I, was, what I was saying is when you're doing thin layers, you have to think about what you're putting it on top of, how that's going to react, and then the layers after that. So that's what I'm constantly thinking about in my head. It's like, okay, if I put this down, it's going to do this to what I have, and then what I do next is going to have this effect on what I just did. So it's a constant um, color theory exercise. It's never ending. I'm just going to get a used, um, a couple of used gloves. I'm out of gloves too, which are still hard to get by the way because of COVID. I usually get them from Harbor Freight because they're inexpensive. Um, but they actually did something really cool. They actually donated all their gloves uh, to first responders at the very beginning of this mess. So that's kind of cool they did that. Uh, I'm going to pause. I'll be right back. Okay. So as silly as it sounds, what I've been doing with my gloves is once I use them, I, and you take them off, they turn inside out, then I just use them inside out. So I've <laughs> been using them twice. But, okay, I think we're almost there. Again, I don't want this real watery. I want this... I wash is typically mostly water. Okay, this should be pretty good. Okay, so... Let's test it out on the head first. You might be wondering why I have hooks in here. This is so I can hang it up in my spray booth to paint. 
because I can't hold this thing and paint it. So it's it's just light enough that I can hang it in my spray booth without it falling and crashing. So I have a hook on the bottom and hook on the bottom that hook on the bottom and hook on the top that you don't see once he's put together. So I'm gonna test this out on a head first. Let's do the one without teeth. Just for a second. Okay, so here we go. Let's get a, a brush. And I'll work a small area at a time. And we're gonna put this in. We're gonna let it sit for a second. I did the reason I sealed these with the Krylon mat is because Badger Stylo Res is a water-based primer, and even though it shouldn't do anything to it after it's dried, um, I only let it dry for about 10 minutes. I didn't want to risk it. So I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna do a head and then send a picture to my client because he's usually on Facebook during the day. I'm gonna do the whole thing just so it's all consistent. I want to make sure I got some of this in all the cracks. And if there's a little kind of variation in the color, that's okay. I mean, this guy is made out of stone. And I usually don't worry about the keys because um, you don't see them. So uh, who was it that I saw that he actually paints all the keys black, which is kind of a nice finishing touch on pieces. Um, who is that? I forgot the painter's name. But uh, I saw a review on one of his paint ups and he, he, paint, he uh, paints all the keys black, which is kind of a nice little touch. Um, I might start doing that. Okay, so we got this kind of covered. I'm going to let this sit for just a few minutes. So I want this to kind of stain this. And what more importantly is when I go to wipe this off, I don't want to pull it out of the cracks. So I'm looking a little messy right now, but that's okay. And then I've got a, a towel over here. So let me get a different towel. I'm use my, I'm use this guy here. I've got a bunch of these really crappy rags I use for wiping off washes. Okay. Let's, yeah, see it's pulling it up. Pulling it out of the cracks. So right now I'm just experimenting to see um, how to get the look I want. this dry for a little bit so I'm gonna pause and let this dry for a little bit and then we'll come back okay so this is actually starting to look like something what I did is I didn't um, turn my exposure. I didn't wipe the the wash off I actually hit it with a hair dryer and I kind of got this look and I'm kind of digging it so um, I think I'm gonna do that on the rest of it and then what I did once it's dry I kind of just 
get a very light wipe because it has some like runs and stuff down here underneath the neck. So I think we're going to do this for the rest of them and then uh, seal it and go from there. But I think that's starting to look like something. So we'll come back after I get all that done. Okay, so I'll show you what I did next. So I, on the second head, after I got done with that first step, I did the wash again and now I'm just blotting it off. And it's just staining the rock a little bit more. So this is kind of like where I want to be, I think. Um, overall, before I seal it. So this this one just has the first step. This one has the second step where I, I hit it again and blotted it off. So I'll show you what I, how I did that. It's pretty simple. trick is going to get this all getting all this to match so I just took the wash did it again like this I'm gonna make sure I have enough of this for the torso I'm pretty sure I do so my client asked to see a photo of this in the progress, so I sent him the photo of the photo of his head. He's like, oh, "That's like a little ugly." He's like, "Yeah, man, it's like the first step of twelve, <laughs> or however many this is gonna take." And then I'm just gonna take this and dab it. So it's doing two things: it's staining the, it's staining it a little bit more, and it's adding a little more texture to the to them. That one seemed that one stained more. Hmm, this may not. I may have to look at this again. I don't know. Okay, so when that dries down, that should be pretty similar to that. So I'm going to do this to the torso. That'll take a little while. And then we'll take come back and take a look at everything. Okay, so I did those first two washes on this guy. And I'm going back, I'm doing one more thing. And I actually got the color I want finally. So on the bottom of my cup... I've got kind of a really thick mix of that burnt sienna, burnt umber so it's really thick. So I'm putting it on full strength and then I'm tapping it off like this. And this is tinting it to exactly the color I've been trying to get to. So I got that brown, two rounds of brown wash underneath this. I did not seal it before I did this next step. Now I'm going in and putting this on. You can see it's pretty thick. Actually, you can't shoot thick because. Not in the frame. I got pain in my hands, so I don't want to touch the camera. So here I'm putting it on pretty thick. You can see there. And it's working a small area time, put it on, and then right away dab it off. And this is giving me the color. It's not orange, it's not it's like a burnt. I don't know. It's like a burnt orange. I like it. This is exactly what I was trying to get to. So after trial and error, which is how I work lots of times, I got there. And I did this on the heads too. And if I see a spot that's a little too bright or a little too, well, if it's too dark, I can't do anything about it. If it's too bright, I just go back and add a little more and blot it off. I 
think this will be a really good base layer for uh, dry, some dry brushing and stuff. Again, I'm just working a small area at a time because I don't want this to sit on there too long. I'm not wiping, I'm dabbing. This is kind of like what we got right there. So once this dries really, really well, I'll seal it really well. And then um, I'll go from there. What I want to do is let this dry down, put the head, put each head on and make sure they match. Pretty close. Yeah, this is looking good. see it so that burnt sienna was the trick it's got a little bit of red in it a little bit of orange but not too orange that was very that was very specific don't make them too orange so I think this is a really good uh, middle ground for that so there's that and here's one of the heads and it looks like as it dries down it's going to match pretty damn good that's the trick when you're doing all these layers like this on multiple pieces you have to do them evenly in the same in the same order in the same everything otherwise you'll find out later that they don't match so now the cracks on his head are showing up a lot more because they're deeper they're they're sculpted deeper um, and they're tighter so like on the on the torso here um, they don't look as pronounced but they'll come out when they do some dry brushing so I think the next step after this is I'm going to seal it and let that dry for a good amount and then I'll do some dry brushing and then I think the last step I'll just get going with an airbrush with a shadow color and just define the muscles so it's just not all flat but this looks really good. I'm really happy with this color. So yeah, again, just kind of a happy accident as I was, as I was doing this. Okay, just make sure we get all the areas the same. And if there's slight differences, it's okay. It doesn't have to be all perfect, but we want the overall tone to be the same. This looks good. All right, so I'm gonna go hang this in the booth to dry. It's gonna take a while because this is this paint's thicker. There's not nearly not much water in it. And then I'm gonna seal them all the pieces. There you go, looking good. All right, so I didn't get this finished up yesterday. Kind of lost some time during the day doing errands, so. I sealed this uh, last night and it's dried. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and do some dry brushing on these things to even everything out a little bit. So I've got this kind of color mixed up. It's a little bit of burnt sienna, a little bit of uh, cadmium yellow, and a little bit of white. So um, again, this is kind of that burnt color that I was going for. So I'm gonna do some dry brushing and see what happens. <laughs> Okay, so this isn't quite, well, we'll see, we'll do this, and then when we go back with a, we'll add some more white to it. This is going to darken them down a little bit, but that's okay. Okay. 
It'll even things out a little bit. Yeah, this actually is looking pretty good. It's darkening him down a little bit, but that's okay. It's evening the wash out pretty nicely. So, yeah, I think that's a good effect right there. And you can see the, the cracks and everything pretty good. So left before dry brushing, right after. So we're getting, going a little darker than I wanted to, but we'll bring it back up um, in the next step, I think. So I'm going to do that to the other head. Again, this is pretty light. It's just kind of a, just to kind of help even things out a little bit. So I, my client asked me, like, it's looking a little splotchy. Like, what you're seeing, all these little dark spots, those are details in the sculpt that you don't see until you start painting it. So, because I did a wash and I didn't airbrush it, all those details are coming out now. Which I think you should show off, personally. Okay, I'll just double check that they look similar, and they do. So I'm going to do this to the torso, and then I'll seal everything, and then we'll do another round of dry brushing um, to brighten them back up a little bit, because it's getting a little dark, I think. Um, I don't know. So we'll do that, and I'll come back. All right, so I went and sealed everything, the torsos and the uh, spray booth drying. So now I've got this kind of highlight color mixed up, and actually, uh, I... Earlier in this process, I actually wiped off a little of this paint too much and it went down to the kind of primer. So I thought about dry brushing in this primer, but I wanted to uh, kind of mimic the red that I got going on here. So I mixed up uh, some white, some of that cadmium yellow, and just a little bit of the color I just dried brush on. I may add just a little bit more. This may be a little too bright. So I'm taking the color I previously dried brush. I got a lot of paint mixed up here, way more than I, I need. I'm going to un unfortunately waste a lot of paint, but um, it's kind of... Sometimes it just takes me a while to mix it up and I, I waste the materials, but that's just how it goes. So I don't want the super, super white, um, cause I think it'd look really weird. So I'm just slowly adding into this mix, the color I just dry brushed on a little bit of time. I don't want to go too much too fast. So I'm just going to keep adding it until I think I got the tone I want. Like I said, I don't want it white. That'd look weird, I think, on this. I just want to... I think this may be it right here. So by sealing the heads, by sealing everything, that allows me to... If I don't like what I got going on, I can, I can wipe it off uh, relatively quickly and it won't affect anything. Okay, so let me get another paper towel to wipe my brush off on. See how this looks. All right, so I got a little bit. I don't need a whole lot of this. I'm gonna use the same brush I used earlier. Just put a little bit on. I don't want to do this like really light. So we're gonna try it on the head first and see what this does. So I'm gonna try, just try to use the flat part of my brush. Maybe not. Maybe I'll. Yeah, that's looking good. This process will take a little bit longer because I have to be a little more careful as 
far as how much I put on. So I want to build it up really, really slow. I'm really just using the flat part of my brush and that way it just really hits the high areas. Looking pretty good. So this will lighten them up a little bit overall, but it'll also bring out the details. And this will darken down as it dries a little bit, so I may have to go back and do it again after it dries. The sculpt has lots of details in it that you don't see until you start doing these, these things to them. But I think I got the color spot on to what we we're going for. So I'm hitting the eyebrows a little heavier and the cheeks a little heavier. So they get a little bit of shading. I'm going to go with an airbrush with some clear color and hit the shadows a little bit. I think that looks pretty good. So right, I'm not sure you can tell the difference, no dry brushing, or right dry brushing, left no dry brushing. So I'm gonna do that to the other head and the torso, and then seal it again, and see what it looks like. Okay, so I think this will be the last step in doing the rock skin on thing. Looking really good, sealed everything. I've mixed up in my airbrush some Badger Ghost Tints. I've got brown with a couple of drops of black. So I get a dark brown. And now we're going to go in, because even though I did all the dry brushing and everything, he's still looking flat, meaning that there's no delineation between features on him. So I want to go in and do some airbrushing in the deep crevices, like in the eyes. Brows. Just real light. As ghost tints, you can I, I tend to spray them straight out of the bottle. They are they seem to be a little thick, but I do like them. When I thin them, I tend to um, they tend to uh, cool too fast, so. I really kind of just kind of deal with them a little on the thick side. In the nostrils.
And it will dry tip pretty easily too because of the thickness. I got this, my air pressure turned up pretty high. So I think you can see that in camera. So we still can see all the shading, everything we did underneath. We're just um, bringing out the details and the, the muscles and stuff. So this is really hard to see the muscles because you got all this rock texture going on. So you just got to, I've got it pulled back quite a way from my face so I can kind of get a sense where all the details are. I do open the eyes pretty dark. You can get some really bright blue eyes. So they'll really pop uh, when those get put in. My client kept asking for work in progress photos, and every time I send them photos, I was like, is that going to get... So what's that? that? That looks a little weird. It's because, like, it, until you get to the final few steps, it looks really weird. Like, it looks, it continues to get worse looking until you get these last few steps. Um, and that's just the way I paint. I mean, like I said, I spent a ton of time just on getting the, the undertones uh, the way I want them before I start actually you know, finishing it up. So, so I'm going to darken this little crease in his mouth pretty good. So that's looking really nice. So the left is with shading, the right is without, and it's subtle, but it's there. Um, and when I flat coat it, it'll show up even more. I have to mix some more of this tint up in the airbrush because the torso is going to take quite a bit. good and it kind of shades his head a little bit give him a little shape I'm coming I'm, I'm airbrushing this way so that the the paint fades towards the top I just want to do that real subtle I don't want to darken them down any because I really like the tone I got going on Do the other face. So I think you get the idea. I'm going to do the other face and the torso and then seal it and then we'll take a look. Okay, so um, I base coated the eyes in uh, an off white and I just sealed those. I got, I forgot, I got to paint the cigar too. So I base coated the cigar in dark African flesh, and then I gave it a wash of the brown um, from uh, the uh, ghost tints. So this is kind of what it looks like. Now I'm just gonna paint the, um, the cherry on it. So for that, I'm gonna do, um, basically I'm gonna just do like it's kind of uh, not lit, but like it's, um, oh, what do I wanna say, like, um, like it's like ash. So I'm gonna paint it, first I'm gonna paint it a dark gray color. I'm not sure how much this will, you'll be able to see me do because it's pretty small. And it does have a magnet, so I've got it kind of just here on my X-Acto knife to hold it.
All right. So I'm gonna let this dry. I'll seal it and I'll dry, by, dry brush some uh, white on top and it'll look like it's ashed. So um, once it's dry, I'll come back and do that. All right, so I sealed that and I'm just gonna go in with some white on this little small brush. A little flat brush maybe. And let me get just a little bit. Just need the tiniest amount. Here, I'm just gonna dry brush a little white on there. Around the edges. Because the only time a cigar glows um, red or orange is if you're inhaling. Otherwise, it just looks ashed over and he's gripping it in his teeth. He's not actually inhaling, so that's why we're doing it this way. Around the edges a little bit. Ashed over cigar, so we'll seal that and then the cigar's done. Okay, we're in the home stretch on these guys. I gotta do the eyes and the teeth on the gritting portrait, and he's done. So, like I said earlier, I base coated the eyes already in an off white and sealed them. So now we're gonna do, you know, I sheet eyes decals because <laughs> I suck at painting eyes still. Um, I need to get a new blade. Cut these. I probably had to buy some more blades after I don't know, two years or something like that. Because I bought two packs last time I bought them and they lasted me several years. Okay, so this guy's got pretty pretty bright blue eyes. So I think we're gonna go. That to the side. I think we're gonna go with these guys right here. I'm gonna pause one second. All right, I just had to change the batteries on my microphone, so hopefully um, all that stuff I was recording is recorded. All right, so he's got blue eyes. We're gonna go with uh, these right here. Now he's awfully squinty, and so I'm gonna have him looking up. So what I do is I'll I'll cut these out pretty loose right now like this okay now I got another set right here and I cut them out together because I want to cut them that so I got my four eyes and now what I'm gonna do is when they cut the tops off because I have them looking up so I like to have them together and I think we're gonna do it I tend to have the highlight going towards the top I'm not sure if I'll show this on camera but Some light on here. My camera's so in shadow. Sorry. Ah. Come on. So I like to take a ruler. And static. It looks to play with them. These decals are fairly fragile, so you have to kind of be careful with them because um, they're very thin. So I take a ruler, and I'm sure you can't see what I'm doing. Don't think I'll focus that close. Let me back up a little bit. This camera not, does not have macro capabilities.
place it across. Okay. So there are my eyes right there. And we do the same thing with these. Better to make two or three passes and try to do it all at once like I just did there because it'll grip them and they'll move. All right, so there's the other eyes. Okay. I'm going to back up a little bit. And I'll just do one on camera. And I've shown this before in other videos, so... Need a little cup of water, clean water, and then I also um, will go in and trim the eyes closer. So I don't have a lot of film around the edges. So I'm just trimming these uh, eyes a little closer to the to the actual eyeball. So there's a lot of film around here. I struggle to get them in place. Okay. So then I take a brush. Put some water on the eye. This has been sealed. Like that. And actually this time I'm just going to put the decal on there. And then put some water on it. And then I need a toothpick. And in a second this should... Loosen up from the paper. And then we'll take the brush, clean it off suck up some of the excess water need a, need a dry brush that one's got too much liquid on it it's not sucking anything up the other one on while that dries. I'll give them the same, look in the same way. I just wipe my brush and I can pick the decal right up. Again, we're gonna let this sit for a second. They loosen very fast on this, um, whatever the decal paper they print on it. The film releases very easily from the paper. So 
what I'm doing is I'm going in there and soaking up the water and then taking the brush and putting it in my mouth to get the water off of the brush. Alright, so we want to get this guy to look at the same way. So, kind of like where this eye is, this eye needs to come in a little bit. Also, if you turn it upside down and stare at it, it's easier to get a, a judgment on the eyes. And I think those are looking pretty good. So we're going to let those dry. And then I'll put the decal setting solution on there. It'll just take a minute for these to dry. There's not much water on them. But right now they're very easy to move. So we'll do the other head. So those eyes are a little more squinty, so I cut them a little, I cut the eyes a little bit smaller. This head, he's not so squinty, so the eyes are just a hair bigger. Because you'll see more of the eyeball. It's the same process, we're going to trim these pretty close. One of the hardest things to do is actually get the paper out of the way because it's wanting to, because the water, the surface tension is wanting to stick to the, the decal and everything around it. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing. Soak up excess water. This one. Hopefully the teeth won't take me too long. It'll take me a long time to do. I don't know. I need to look at a reference to see what his gums are supposed to be like. Are they supposed to be like real gums or I don't know, like stone gums? I don't know. Again, I'm just going to sit here for a second. It literally takes like five seconds for these to loosen up. All right, it actually kind of went right in place, right where it needs to go. Let's turn it upside down. Yeah, that looks good. All right, so I'm gonna let these dry, and once they dry, in a few minutes, I'll put on a nice coat of the um, microset, and then I'll let that dry, and then I'll seal them, and then um, I'll do like the waterline, and I'll probably outline the eyes. Um, I may not in black. I don't. Know, we'll take a look at them. So once they're sealed, uh, once these are dried and sealed, I'll come back and we'll do the rest of the detailing. Okay, so the eyes are done except for gloss coat. I'm gonna do that the, that's always the very last step whenever I build something. So um, instead of trying to hand paint these teeth, I decided to mask them off with some Silly Putty as such. And I'm gonna spray them. Um, probably with some bone white, and then I'll dry brush some white on top just to give them a little bit of shape. The trick is to get the Silly Putty so it doesn't cover any of the teeth. I think that's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna get a little bone white in my airbrush.
bone white. Nat actually, natural bone. Kind of a really kind of warm color. Don't need a lot. Turn my air pressure down so I don't risk getting any paint where I don't want it. Got a good coat. Coming out real light and slowly building it up. Okay, just like that. I'm gonna hit this with a hair dryer. I'm gonna seal it. And then I'm gonna come back and dry brush this on the tops, add a little highlight to them. So I'll do that, uh, I'll be back in a second. All right, so I just sealed those, hit them with the hair dryer again, I'll dry that. And I'm gonna take some semi-transparent bone white. And since this is super runny, again, I don't need a lot, I just need a little bit. Now I'm gonna take a little brush. And we're going to dry brush some of this on there. Let's see what this does. You may not be able to see it in camera if it does anything. Yeah, you're not going to be able to see it in camera, but I'm getting a little bit of a highlight. So just giving the tea some shape. It's pretty subtle. No, you probably can't see it on camera. Let me start bring my exposure way down. No, you probably still can't see it. But it's there. I got a nice little shape highlight to them. So then I'll seal this again. I actually take the silly putty off now. Looks good. Let's see how my masking looks. Masking is pretty good. Okay, now I just gotta paint the gums. I'll just do that off camera because I have to get like really close in there. And I can't do that on camera. Okay, those are looking good. All right. So once I seal these and get the gums done. Then I just gotta gloss the eyes and the teeth and he's finished. So um, probably the next clip will be him all done. I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, so I got the teeth done except for glossing, but let me explain to you what I did. So this is my palette for my teeth. All those colors went into the gums. <laughs> so I airbrushed the, the, the bone white, I dry brushed it a little bit. And then what I did is I went in and I hand painted this really light pink on the gums. This color right here, it's really bright. Um, so I hand painted a really light pink on there, sealed it, then I did a wash of this kind of medium brighter pink, sealed it, and then I went and did a wash of this, and outlined the edges, sealed that, and then I went back and did a wash with the, added some brown to it, sealed that, and then I dry brushed some white back on top. So it was a lot of back and forth, but we got a lot of nice depth into the teeth now and gums. And the last step is to gloss it. So I've got some of my Automotive 2K clear in here. 
and we're going to gloss the eyes and the teeth. And this clear coat will take, um, I don't know, I'll take a couple hours for it to, that's actually, I don't want to use that brush. I'm going to use a lighter brush. This is why you buy cheap brushes. <laughs> Alright, so we got this liner brush. And we're just going to gloss the eyes and the teeth. I've seen a lot of guys use epoxy on the teeth. Which is probably how they kind of get their really cool, I think it's too yellow, but you can add blue dye to it, or a little blue. Depending on the epoxy you use, it tends to dry yellow. So if you want yellow tea, that's kind of cool. I think it looks a little funky. I think it looks too thick. I don't know. It looks like he's, when I see um, teeth with epoxy on them, I'm not a fan of the, of the look. I like this 2K Automotive because it's just thick enough and it gloss and it, it dries super, super shiny. As it dries, it levels out. There's that. I'll use a bigger brush on the teeth so I get these eyes done. too much on my brush and it kind of put a drop down. I don't want that because it could run out of the eyes as it's drying. So let's take some from here. Sorry if I can't see what I'm doing. Okay, there's that. Use these in your brushes, you gotta clean them out right away with lacquer thinner. I should buy like a hundred lining brushes. I go through them so quick because I'm, I'm not very careful with them. <laughs> these are cheap lining brushes, and I like them, they're like one of my favorite brushes to use. Alright, for the teeth, uh, we'll use a slightly bigger brush. Actually, a much bigger brush. Oh crap. I just splashed clear coat on myself. Get that wiped off before I touch anything. I got a sticky thumb. Let's clean off here a second. All right, for the teeth. So I do seal this with the uh, Krylon before I this on just so um, when I'm putting this on it doesn't reactivate the paint. Pretty good. Actually, that reacted the paint, the paint a little bit. I'll have to let that dry. I think I'm okay. We'll see. All right. So there we go. I think it's looking pretty good. So um, I'm gonna let this sit for a little while. 
I'm gonna clean up my work area and then we'll put it together and see what he looks like. Alrighty, and here he is, all done. Looking really, really sharp. Super happy with this. It's maybe one of my favorite paint-ups I've done in a while. Uh, simply because the rock posed a really cha it was challenging and I, I, I achieved the look I wanted. I achieved the look I think my client wants. It's not too orange, kind of a, a burnt, rusty brown look. It looks really, really good. And I haven't seen um, a thing painted this way before with all the dry brushing and stuff. I can tell it's all just been airbrushed. So if you just airbrush, you lose all this really cool texture in the rock, but by doing the wash and all the dry brushing, all those details come out. Um, so it looks really, really good. So um, we'll do a spin around here. And it contrasts nice with the rock down here, which is again, two tones. It's, it's hard to see. It's actually, they're pretty close, but we've got like a yellow tone here. This is more of a reddish tone brown here. Um, the one thing I don't like about this thing, getting Doom's uh, helmet in his hands is a major pain in the ass. It's just you have to angle it just right and put it in there and, and then it finally goes in but it takes forever to get to for me to get it to go in uh doom's hood's looking good i had some brush touch-ups i had to do um on this part that's in his hand once i took all the tape off and i, I kind of knew this was going to happen all those washes and everything kind of got underneath the tape so i scrubbed it i took a toothbrush with some windex and all the paint came off but i had one or two little areas that lifted so i just took a brush and brush touch that was pretty easy um what else oh yeah i need to hit this little spot right here i'm just gonna hit that real quick with a bit of flat coat i can see just a teeny tiny bit of epoxy that oozed didn't ooze out but i can see it in the joint there so we're gonna um i'll take care of that but uh really looking good yeah i hope my client likes this because i'm i'm really thrilled with it i think the colors are spot on there's that portrait The eyes and teeth are still wet, uh, the gloss coat is still wet, but um, it's fine. I can actually take pictures of this today. There's that portrait. Really happy with that. Digging the teeth. So I'll get all these but I haven't uploaded any videos till now, so I'll do like just upload all three. I'll make all three videos and I'll release those today or tonight. But uh, there you go. One quarter scale custom. Thing. I'm really happy with it. I think it looks awesome and this will get my look great in my client's display. So um, thanks for watching and uh, we'll catch you guys next time. Up next is Aquaman. So <laughs> that's going to be a long work in progress. I anticipate two weeks on that one. Um, just because he's massive, there's a lot of parts and there's some logistics I have to deal with. But uh, that's the next project. So that'll be a long uh, work in progress series. But uh, yeah, I got thing done in about four days, but I put in some serious time. The first day, I think I put like 15 hours in, then I put like 12 hours in. So I've got, you know, 40 hours in this guy. That's about how long it takes. That's the fastest I've ever done a piece is three days, about 36 hours. So that's why I have a minimum fee of basically 750 to do a quarter scale piece. Because if I charge 20 bucks an hour, and if I spend like 10 hours a day on average, but I spend more than that. The fastest I've ever done a quarter scale piece was uh, three days, and that was a custom. It was a prototype for Alpha Lab Three, uh, Alpha Three, their uh, Batman. Uh, it was a relatively simple paint job, but typically it, it's about forty hours for me to do a paint job. That's why most of my quotes are like right at a thousand dollars. So um, yeah, that's just and you know I got my cost of my supplies, but that's usually what it takes. So it took me four days, but I've got easily forty hours into the sky. Um, but he's looking really sharp. So uh, I'm gonna send some quick cell phone photos to my client make sure he's happy But uh, in my mind he's done and he looks freaking awesome. So As always, thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye